Let's go over everything about the Tesla Model 3, the new long range one. Tesla just claimed that it can do 750 kilometers of WLTP range. I reckon realistically 630, 650, maybe 680 or something like that. So that's more than a BYD uh, Seal or Polestar 2. But here's the question, would it actually do that in the real world? And why should we want 750 kilometers of range? Is it starting to get a little bit more than we really need at this point? Maybe, I suppose, if you buy the long range Model 3 in cash at the door in Queensland, Australia, 65,900 Australian dollars. Or if you want to buy it on a loan and you don't want to do any lease or anything like that, you want to just get a loan, you pay 14 grand extra. So it's $80,000. And then uh, if you want it in red, you have to pay $3,000 extra. I literally mention this every other video I do about Teslas. It's ridiculous. $3,000 just to change the color of a car is, is kind of not on. I don't really approve of that. I always have liked the Model 3 because it's kind of, it's not really a statement car. It has literally, it's not pretentious in any way at all. It's very underwhelming in its nature. It's just a decent little car. Kind of like back in the 90s, Ford Mondeo, Volkswagen Golf. Bland as you like, gets the job done. It's decent. They're not really swanky or anything. But when you get it on credit, you kind of got to justify paying $80,000 for it. And I think that's a bit, that's a bit crazy, really. So just for a fun comparison as well, in the Netherlands, because in Europe and the UK, cars are more expensive. So if you bought it in cash, you'd pay $81,000 out of the door and then more if you got a loan compared with 65,000 in Australia out the door. So Australia is really cheap compared to other countries. Hello folks, Ben Alexander. Thank you so much for all the new viewers and all the subscribers, all the comments. Uh, Cam, EV Cam, legend. Thank you very much for the lovely emails and the videos as well. I appreciate your time. And uh, obviously some people have noticed in my Zika 7X reviews that I, I take a very honest approach. And I think it's because it's your, your cold, hard cash you're spending on these products. And I don't want to talk just positively about things. I want to just be truthful, whatever it is. So kind of like if you go into a stationery shop, you expect them to do the one thing, you know, you expect them to sell you some paper and some paper clips, you know, or a fish and chip shop. If they haven't got fish or chips in it, they're not doing their job right. So as a car reviewer, I sort of notice on YouTube when you look at things like uh, the BYD Seagull, for example, basically everybody just says it's the best thing on earth. There, there are no issues. But actually, there are issues with pretty much every car. The reason why the Zika 7X stands out from the crowd is because it's actually uh, it's actually very 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 hard even for someone like me to really find something bad about it it's just flaw utterly flawless model 3s are actually also similar in in so many ways i mean they they are a little bit soulless definitely they're a little bit quiet a bit minimalist a bit boring but they are incredibly good and they the ergonomics for driving incredibly really really, really good that was one of the things I liked about the Zika 7X as well, was the driving ergonomics, great, but you also get some some buttons and it kind of feels more like a more like a car that you were used to 10 or 15 years ago, but with the whole, the modern 2025 20, spec and the computers and that sort of stuff. So I, I really like it. Te I've never notched Tesla's cars post-2019 because they fixed them and they stopped them really braking all the time. And uh, I'm just on the fence with Teslas. People say I've, I've been called someone who's uh, someone called me recently a Marga, I think, a right wing Marga person. I've no idea. There are some literally I get called everything under the sun. It's mad, honestly. So I'm, I'm not pro Tesla or against Tesla. I don't really have comments on Elon. And uh, I really just talk about the cars. The cars are pretty good these days. But um, yeah, let's take a proper look at how far you'd actually get if you bought one because they say 750 kilometers, you're not gonna get 750 kilometers. It's very, very unlikely. And uh, I mean, impressive though they are, you just won't get it because the WLTP range is kind of lab tested. It's not, it's not very real. So yeah, if you've got good temperature and you don't get any cold days or anything like that, if you've got flat ground, no hills, gentle on the accelerator, you can probably do 700, I would imagine. But uh, if you, for example, the cities in Australia, this is an interesting thing if you're a, a geek like me, the ci cities in Australia, Melbourne, I'm not sure about Adelaide, sorry, I'm really sorry Adelaide, Adelaide is genuinely a, a stunning, beautiful town, I was there a while ago, but 
Melbourne, Sydney, Brisbane are pretty much equidistant. So it's about 840 or 50 kilometres between them. So it applies, you know, Brisbane to Sydney, Sydney to Melbourne. It's kind of a similar sort of uh, bit of maths here. So if you were to drive from the bottom half of Brisbane to the top half of Sydney, it's a trip of roughly 849, 850 kilometres door to door if you had a door at either end because you're, you're posh or something, or you're going to visit family, you know? If you take the M1 motorway going down, you're kind of buggered if you can't, because that's the only motorway on the east coast of Australia. So if you take the motorway, you can stop, uh, you know, you can go through Coffs Harbour. You can charge at Coffs Harbour, by the way. That's a very good charge uh, stop there. You can charge at Newcastle. There's actually charge stations every 150 or 200 kilometres on the route down. Just driving time, moving is about nine hours or eight hours 40 eight hours 50 i think it is depending on traffic and roadworks of which once you get past the gold coast and go south there's basically no traffic it's just brisbane to gold coast always traffic you just stop anywhere for about 25 30 minutes to charge along that route probably before newcastle because you'll be pretty much out of battery at that point and that's it you just drive all the way you just drive nothing more to it you just need a quick stop a quick boost that's it and i think that's that's herein lies the story there are a few people who would actually want to drive the whole way without stopping anyway so even if it could do 850 or 900 kilometers most people wouldn't want to do that you just need to stop briefly to stretch your legs get some you know blood in your legs or something like that for 25 30 minutes that's it you're pretty much done it's pretty much the same story now in 2025 with the Zika 7X, the Skoda Enyaq, uh, all sorts of different cars, Model Y, for example, the old Model 3, the new Model 3 is even better because it's more efficient. Four years ago, five years ago, it really wasn't the case. There were just not really any cars that you could do that sort of thing with, you know. But now, the range of electric vehicles in Australia is brilliant. You can just do any of these trips. You can go the whole way around the country now pretty much with no issues at all and i think this is an interesting uh, point to make for years people in australia drove these cars i'll put a little clip on the screen now so let's just go back 15 years 2010 you could get the toyota rav4 you can get a honda jazz you can get all these different cars all you know roughly they will do similar sort of ranges to uh, these cars and sure you could stop and get petrol and fill it up in three minutes but what's the difference three minutes at a petrol station or uh you know 25 or 30 minutes for i mean you're on a nine hour road trip so you're gonna stop for you're not just gonna stop for three minutes for the petrol and get straight in and go for four and a half hours more so there's there's really no consequence at this point to have an electric car even if you do these ridiculous trips like really far long interstate trips i think that's a very large amount of range 600 but 700 or 750, I think it be- it will barely feel like it will need charging anymore, I think, as you go through Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, through the weeks, if you're just in and around Brisbane City and that sort of thing. But there's a big but, and uh, it's hard to get the WLTP figure. So, you know, 750, you know, you're not going to get that. Drag increases with the square of speed, and energy use climbs even faster than that. And so realistically you're probably going to get in this even though they say 750 you might only get 620 to 650 and then if you're very very gentle and you're slow and uh you know you go 80 or 90 maybe you'll get 700 maybe you could eke out 750 if you're a genius but at a at hundred kilometers an hour so you're not going 110 like a lot of the new south Wales speed limit is on the motorway going south if you go 100 you'll get maybe 620 650 or something like that you can often get close to the WLTP if you're keen, you know, if you're really, really trying to uh, to get it. So in the real world, you can still drive it, even if you take off some range and it's not, you don't go with the figure that they tell you. You can literally drive it from Edinburgh to London on a charge, which is amazing. Maybe not in winter with the heaters on, maybe not, but pretty much. Tesla's own data actually backs it up. And if you go on YouTube, all the reviews will also back this up. You can genuinely do this now. So it's a 400-mile car. The current Model 3 long range is rated at uh, what it was, 629. If you get the all-wheel drive version, 629 kilometers WLTP. Usually people are getting, I think, 520, 540 on the highway if you go 100 kilometers per hour, not miles per hour. 
And the new rear wheel drive long range version is the bigger battery pack, lighter drive train. You don't have the front motor. So that gives people usually 620. So uh, that's, that's pretty good. If you've got maybe even a bit more, if you've got a tailwind and no hails or anything. But in Australia, we don't have winters. So we don't really have to worry so much about uh, winter issues unless you're in the snowy mountains or something like that because there is an actual legitimate alpine region which is amazing in australia uh so the brisbane to sydney run yes you'd need you can do it basically the same as you could a, a 2010 camry or a rav4 or something like that you just need a little brief stop at a charger and you'll probably eat a sandwich or something at the very least you're going to stop for a sandwich and stretch your legs and walk around your car twice or something you could probably get from brisbane to newcastle and then the battery warning light will pop up and then you can charge in Newcastle because there's a charger there too. Then you plug in at a supercharger, grab a coffee and char charge for 25 to 30 minutes, something like that. So, yeah, that would get you 300 kilometers, probably something like that, half an hour in the charger. And then you can get back and you've got probably, you know, I don't know, 15%, 20% left when you by the time you get to Sydney. And uh, for context as well, the new Model 3's uh, charge speed, 170 kilowatt DC charge speed, means that you'd probably add 300 kilometers in half an hour. So, yeah, that's barely enough time, is he, for a, a really like a big proper lunch or anything like that anyway. And it's spread over a nine hour drive. So the least you want to stop for is, is 30 minutes. As much as I don't subscribe to the whole bladder range argument that a lot of people do, I just, I don't really think it's a very, I think we can do better than that. I think in the real world, if your car can actually do eight or nine hours of driving on a charge, or maybe seven and a half, eight, eight and a half, nine hours driving, you're going to want to stop because there's going to be other issues. It's not just your bladder. You're going to be starving. You're going to, you're going to have numb legs. Uh, you're going to have, you know, it's going to be sore. So, uh, yeah, I think in the real world, it's, we're at a really good spot in time, I think. And also, we don't pay road user charges, so big win in Australia at the minute. So you can drive from Brisbane, Sydney, Melbourne easily. And I think these days, we can pretty much put that to rest at this point. I think 2025, maybe next year, we can kind of get to the point now where we don't really need to stress too much about that aspect of driving electric car. We can just do massive road trips in electric cars now. Driving electric car can be just as painless as an ice car on long trips, if you have the right one, obviously. Maybe not a BYD Seagull or anything like that. But when the Gen 2 battery goes in it, for the Blade battery, you know, I mean, that's that's still pretty good, isn't it? You'll, you'll not get 700 kilometres, but it will do very, very well. So we can talk energy consumption for a minute. At 100 kilometres an hour, Tesla's uh, M3, Model 3 usually, I think, does about 15 kilowatt hours per 100 uh, maybe up to 17 if you've got it full of people and you know put some things in it and some a roof rack and stuff like that so if the new battery pack is roughly 82 kilowatt hours usable probably lines up with 600 650 kilowatt uh, kilometers on a charge and uh, that I think is outstanding for basically any EV of this size I think it's brilliant the clever bit here though is really the things that Tesla have done to make it really really efficient so they've cut rolling resistance and uh, they've reshaped the aero they've even slightly tweaked the the wheel trims on the on the wheels you you could probably I mean I think if you click on the website 18 to 19 inch wheels literally 50 is it 50 60 kilometer difference if you choose 19 inch wheels or 18 inch wheels so in my in my mind there's no real reason for having 19 inch wheels because they don't really i don't think they look very much better maybe if i'm wrong let me know but if you're going to lose 50 percent uh, sorry 50 kilometers of range why on earth would you do that it makes no sense to me because they you're in a model three so you, you don't look you know overtly cool or anything like that anyway you just like a bloke in a model 3 just like someone was a, a bloke in the Ford, in a ford mondeo in 1999 it's not a great car it's just it's just a, it's just a very it's just a pretty decent car really so to pay extra for cooler wheels you're going to lose a lot of range which is not a selling point down the line when someone else wants to buy it for a lot of people and i did a poll on this and actually a lot of people prefer having more better aerodynamics than slightly bigger wheels so I think I'm not alone in this, honestly. So that's it. The Tesla Model 3 is, 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 is brilliant. I think the range is just great. That actually starts to make me almost kind of want to go buy one. I'm not going to go buy one, 
but it, it starts to be very, very compelling when it starts to go over that 700 kilometer mark because that's really, really, really great. So this is a far cry from where EVs were three or four, maybe five years ago in Australia. We've we just kind of got there in the last year or two. It's brilliant. And now all of a sudden in this last 12 months, there's like the Zika 7X, the Zika 9X. You've got all these different vehicles that are just flooding into the market and uh, like the new MGs beautiful really really great although some people say they're copying tesla i don't really think they are copying tesla but uh, yeah this, these are the, i think these might be some of the, the golden times and in the future things might change and i don't know how it will look in 30 years but now i think it's brilliant so many good things to look forward to if you're uh, one of these people on screen thank you very much and uh, you know these are the people that support the channel chuck me a couple of dollars every month or they're on the free tier and you can go on patreon and join for free any comments leave below i will reply thank you very very much for uh, for listening thank you again just as a quick recap thank you to all the people that are subscribing that's really nice the channel's really growing and uh i really appreciate it thank you so much